Luke chapter 24. In Acts chapter 1, Luke chapter 24, and Acts chapter 1. Today's Father's Day, and I want to talk just, to, I'm not going to talk to the fathers, I'm talking to everybody today. Because I think oftentimes we think, okay, on this day we just have to remember one person. But I think that it, honestly, I think that we, I want to address something, and for some this will be a little bit more of a tender day um, sermon than, and maybe a little bit harder for them. But I want to, I want to talk to the church a little bit. Um, this past week has been a realization for me for something, and I'll talk to you about it just a little bit. Luke chapter 24, once you've found it, let's all stand as we read the word of God, Luke chapter 24. And verse 30, if you have it, say amen. amen. Scripture says in verse 30, and it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake and gave to them. And their eyes were opened and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said, this is the disciples, and they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked to us by the way? And while he opened to us the scriptures, I want you to notice that little phrase right there, that, that, little, that whole verse, that's, that's all memories. That Jesus is not there, it's all memories. And they rose up, verse 33, and they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way. Again, here's, here's some memories again. And how he was known of them in breaking of bread. Now if you will go to Acts chapter 1 and verse 9. Acts chapter 1 and verse 9. The scripture says in verse 9, And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and this talk about Jesus, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. I want to speak to you this morning, and I don't believe I'll be lengthy, which means we're going to be here a while, but I don't plan on being lengthy this morning. Brother Borner, I don't know what it is about preachers saying we don't plan on being long, we end up being long. And, um, but I want to speak to this morning on the subject, the gift of memory. The gift of memory. Father, take these next few minutes. Let me help your people. Lord, thank you for the gift of memory. May we treat it right. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The past few months have been a stark reality for your pastor that one of the best gifts God has given us is the gift of memory. This past, um, just a few weeks ago, a couple months ago, my Uncle LJ passed away, went to heaven. He was kind of like a second dad to me. Um, when I was in college, he and my Aunt Bessie, kind of took me under their wings and on weekends I could get out of the dorms and get away from the dorm food. Somebody say amen right there. And go have a real meal. And I could go home and get off of the dorm mat and get in a real bed and just enjoy some family time. My Aunt Bessie, of course, was the one who trained me how to be a soul winner. My Uncle L.J., just he, he taught me a lot of important things. One of the, he was very good with numbers, and 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 my wife would would attest to this. The one reason why, when before we had compete, before we balanced our books in a computer, I would sit there 
Brother Melvin, I'd sit there with my checkbook, and if I couldn't find one penny, I would stay trying to find that one penny until I found it. It didn't matter if it would take an hour or whatever, but my Uncle LJ is the one who taught me. He'd say, son, he said, um, he says, every penny is important. You better learn where that money is going. Don't just flippantly change it and say it's okay. He says, you need to find out where it's going. When he passed away, I kind of lost that little bit of a dad figure there in my life. That, But the memory, knowing that he fought in World War II and knowing that he was a deacon at First Baptist Church in Hammond, Indiana for 50 years, the gift of memory. Our beloved pastor for many years, Brother O'Daniel, passed away. We have the gift of memory with Brother O'Daniel. I can remember meeting him for the first time over on MacArthur. A little bit younger, a little bit thinner. Miss Trita hadn't fatted him up for yet, but, but, but he, soul winner. You know what I'm talking about, soul winner. Preacher of truth. Seemed to always have a, you know, I always remember him in front of the crowd. I always had a smile on his face and, and have that joy of life. You got to, I, I'd, leave the, I'd leave the meeting feeling like he had helped me more than I'd helped the people because he was always that happy-go-lucky type of personality when I would see him in front of him, and he loved people, loved people. I'd watched him. I remember as, as we got to this, as the church got to this building and watching Brother O'Daniel and and just, he enjoyed preaching. And, and, and he was my elder statesman, if I could put it that way, but I would get up and preach. And I would, when I was done preaching, now he may have been the biggest liar that ever walked to the face of the earth. I mean, he'd get up and say, boy, Brother Tom, that was a great sermon. Great sermon. And just made me feel like, wow, maybe God is doing something through my life. I don't know. But he, would always, he was always that encourager. He was, and I, I talked to Brother Bobby Harjo, um, the other side of the you know the other side of the family there and I don't know if it's the darker side or the brighter side but but because you're here he's the darker side and you're the brighter side but anyway and and and, and boy he was he was kind of rough back I say rough he, he was he was he was he just expected people to do things back in his younger years and and if they had a bus route he expected that bus to be filled up and he would make sure um how and brother Harjo told me this week he says I was more afraid of coming in with less than 25 on my bus route um, and meeting Brother, Brother O'Daniel than, to, than somebody getting mad at me at the door. He said, because I didn't want Brother O'Daniel to get mad at me. And it's the, it's the gift of memories. And Brother Bobby and I a little bit talked about Brother O'Daniel this week and the memories that he gave us. This past week, I helped bury one of my heroes of the faith, Brother B.G. Buchanan. And my wife knows he... He was one of those men that when I was a nobody, allowed me to go preach in his church. I don't, I, and to this day, I don't know why. Became almost, they, the, he called me his second son. He has, he has a boy named Bobby and a good young man. And, 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 the, and, and, and it got, it, it so much that I almost became a part of the family is that the sisters and the brother all said, well, he, he, he considered you all part of the family. And the memories, I was sitting there this week as I was helping with the funeral and one of the men got up and said, one thing I'm glad, and this is where the sermon came from. He says, one thing I'm glad is that God gave us the gift of memory. He said, we've heard a lot of good memories about Brother Buchanan this week. God gave us a gift of memory. There's nothing worse than watching someone lose their memory through dementia or Alzheimer's. I remember my grandmother had dementia in the early years. Now, my grandmother, and she's in heaven now, and so I hope she's not listening right now. I hope she's just enjoying the golden streets right now. But when she was younger, she was, pre she was pretty hard to get along with, just very hard to get along with. She was just, you, you, you crossed her, and she let you know that you crossed her. And she was just very hard. But she got dementia. Dementia kind of softened her a little bit. And, and it, but it was painful to watch my grandmother begin to lose that memory 
to the point that one day when I had to walk inside the room, I'd have to say, Grandma, I'm your grandson. This is, I'm Alan. And she says, she'd say, who are you? I'd say, I'm Alan. You know, your favorite grandson. <laughs> your best grandson. Somebody help me out. There is a blessing of them losing memory too. You can tell them things that are not true. But anyway, and it's, anybody who's ever watched a loved one lose their memory, nothing worse. God's given us a gift of memory. And what we do with that gift, listen to me very carefully, I think truly determines what God can do through our life because I think so many times we've taken the gift of memory and we've not left somebody with a good memory. We've left some of these names I've just mentioned today, they left us with good memories. I think of Miss Borner and I know that it's, it's probably a little tender right now. She has a gift of memory of mama. And, and probably mama putting food on the table and mama taking care when she was a younger girl and making sure she was cared for. And I know that you have that gift of memory. And I think that the disciples in the story we just read, as they were walking down the road to Emmaus, Jesus was there talking to them, and then all of a sudden he was gone. And when he was gone, and you know what's sad to me? What's sad was they didn't take advantage of him while they had him. They just kind of took him for granted while they had him, and then the only thing they had left after he was gone was the gifts of memory. I believe that when Jesus ascended up to heaven, the disciples are just looking up, gazing up into heaven, and can you imagine the thoughts running through the minds of the disciples? Can you imagine the disciples maybe after, G, after the angel came and said, said he's going to come back, can you see them going back and beginning to talk about the memories of what God did through their life? Can you imagine them talking about, can you see the disciples just sitting around having some popcorn or maybe some Brahms ice cream, you know, the peanut butter, what is it, peanut butter cup ice cream that they make? Man, that, is a, that will make your tongue slap you silly trying to eat that one right there. That is some good ice cream. And, and I'm glad I moved to Oklahoma just so I can have the Brahms ice cream. But anyway, but, um, but I can see them sitting around and just talking around the fire maybe a little bit and say, remember that time we were out in the boat? He told us to go to the other side, and, and we're, we're in the boat, and I can see the disciples begin to tell their side of the story. And I can see them say, yeah, we were scared to death, weren't we? Peter, I can see Peter jumping up. Well, no, I wasn't, of course. I walked on the water. What did you guys do? And I can see them saying, can you remember when Jesus came walking on the water? And the very water that he walked on became calm when he got in that boat. And he said, peace, be still. And nature stood at attention. Because the master had spoke. The seas became calm and they said, and all of a sudden, it just seemed like we got to the other side. I can see another say, you remember that time? We had a big day and 5,000 people showed up. And Brother Danny didn't plan for the meal, right? Oh, that's not in the Bible. I, I forgot about that. <laughs> all we had was five loaves of bread and two fish. And then Jesus said, you know, why, why don't you... Why don't you go get some, some, why don't you go find how much food we have? And they said, but, but master, there's no way we could feed 5,000 people. He says, how much do you have? And they said, well, we've got five loaves and two fish. And we sat there in a little bit of dismay watching Jesus. As he said, well, won't you divide them up in groups of 100 and bring me the food? And he brought the food and he blessed it and gave us each some fish and food. We began to feed and, and, it just, and we fed 5,000 people. They said, man, what wasn't that just a miraculous day. I can see the disciples saying, remember that day that we walked by the fig tree? It wasn't even fig season. Walked by the fig tree, Jesus looks at the tree and curses it. We come by the next day, tree's dead. Dead. 
withered up, gone, not even there, gone, just a little wither up piece of stick sticking out of the ground. They said, do you remember that? Boy, man, isn't that amazing? I can see the disciples sitting around begin to talk about the huge catch of fish and the water turned to wine and the man healed of the palsy and the two blind men they could see again and the dumb and the devil man began to uh, um, be getting his right mind and the, and the can you imagine them talk about the blind Bartimaeus and the, and the blind man Bethesda and the sick man at the pool Bethesda and can you imagine them coming down to the story of Lazarus? So remember that time, Lazarus. I see Lazarus maybe sitting around the disciples. Yeah, that was me. The worst miracle Jesus performed, I was in heaven. And now I had to come back to earth. How would you like to be Lazarus? They said, can you imagine? Lazarus began to, st- he, he was stinking. I mean, stink, stunk, however you want to put it. Whatever you say in your house. He stinks. Jesus said, roll the stone away. I can see the disciples scratching their head. I can see them say, we thought there's no way. Come on. A man, I mean, he's been dead for several days now. His body's beginning to sting. The the, the body is beginning to go go into that that stage where it begins to rot. And and, and Jesus said, roll the stone away like he was going to do something. And he did something. He said, Lazarus, come forth, and life came in back into that body, and that body became whole again, and the sickness was gone, and Lazarus was ready. Oh, oh, what? I can see the disciples talk about Jesus, all gifts of memory. Father's Day. We have Father's Day, Mother's Day, because they're oftentimes days of memory. For some whose fathers have maybe have disappointed them, Father's Day is a little bit harder than others. Because while some, I look at Miss Beth sitting by her daddy this morning and nothing thrills my soul than to be able to see children, be grown children, sit by dad in church like it ought to be. And that thrills my soul. Because there's some that they, if you have to talk to them, while some can champion their dad, others can say, well, what's your dad? And you can't talk about it because you're a little bit embarrassed. To some, it's not the gift of memory. To some, it's the curse of memory. But see, Father's Day is a day that we remember our fathers. It's a time that our families spend with each other. But one thing you've always got to remember, listen to me very carefully is that you are making memories for your family. You'd better be, sir, this morning, as we come to church this morning on Father's Day, you'd better be, sir, that the memories you leave are the type of memories that would give, that that it's a gift, listen now, and not a curse. That it's something your children can look back and say, wow, what a great daddy I had. Wow, what a great mama I had. Man, see what? They weren't everything they're supposed to be, but they left me a good memory. Let me give you several statements, then we'll pack our bags and go eat. Statement number one, that just got Brother Williams excited over there. said eat, and he was excited. <laughs> Statement number one, every action is a memory made. Every action is a memory made. May I say to you this morning, Good, you better make sure that you're leaving good actions for good memories. I know we're not perfect, but every action is a memory made. I remember as a boy growing up, one of the things that I can always, I can still see my dad sitting at that desk there in Leslie Drive, um, Sandy, where at that desk in his office early in the morning reading his Bible. One of the reasons why Brother Domley reads his Bible early in the morning is because dad left an indelible memory, Brother Hard Joe, of reading the Bible every day. And it, it, he didn't have to come to me and say, you need to read your Bible. But he left me a memory of him reading the scriptures. I think of my mama. I would come in at night, time of the middle of the night, and my bedroom was in the garage, and it's not because I was a bad boy. I was just because I was more Christian, let others have the bedroom. That's why. And um, thank you. But anyway, but, uh, but I, I can remember coming in early in the morning, seeing my mom sitting at the same desk praying. They left their actions, listen to me, left a memory, a spiritual memory. 
I can remember on Saturdays, my dad and I, we'd go to our, our place on Saturdays. This would, this would make my daughter a little bit sick. She's not really fond of this restaurant. But on every Saturday, my dad and I would go to Denny's. Get a ground slam breakfast at Denny's. Anybody with me on that one right there? I think we ought to have a church activity. Is there a Denny's around here? Oh, I think we ought to have a church activity at Denny's, Katie. But anyway, memories. But anyway, she has another memory. I can't tell it right now, but we're in church. But anyway, she lost her lunch. But anyway, that's her memory. But anyway, with dad. But anyway, but every, every, every Saturday morning, my dad and I, before soul winning, we go, that was our time every week. We'd go get the Grand Slam breakfast. I'd get, you know, I always liked the pancakes, mother it in, in, in butter. You know, they never put enough butter on pancakes. You, you with me so far? I don't want the dry pancake. I want the taste of butter. I mean cake it in butter. It's good for your cholesterol. And we go every Saturday, and it was it was one of those times that it was a, it was a good memory because it was what started that day. Listen to me that that my dad and I we'd start that day, but then we'd go to prayer time, and then we'd have soul winning time, and we'd go out and reach people for Jesus Christ. May I just remind you, you every action. Listen to me is a memory being made. Let me ask you this question: Would you want the actions you performed this week to be remembered? Would you want your children to catch you, sir, looking at the website you looked at? Would you want your actions, parents, would you want your children to remember the actions of you constantly losing your temper? Well, just tick me off, but then stop ticking. That's good preaching. See, I move up to Oklahoma, my language begins to flourish. Get, rid of, get, get north of the Red River and all of a sudden spirituality starts coming in. Somebody say amen right there. You see, every action is a memory made. I don't want, listen, I don't want my daughter to remember me as an angry old grouch who can't get, who couldn't enjoy life, who couldn't get along with anybody. I want her to remember her daddy. I want her to remember some spiritual actions. I want her to remember a dad that has a good disposition. Is he perfect? Um, anyway, but is he perfect? No, no. But listen to me. I want her to have some spiritual memories. Do you understand? We're making memories. And by the way, you say, but I'm not, but my parent, but my kids are all grown up. Hey, you may be a grandparent, but you're still making memories. And grandpa and grandma, may I just say to you, you can, oh, oh, we all know stories of grandpa and grandma. Come on now. We all have those memories from grandpa and grandma. Grandpa and grandma, don't just spoil your kids and, and show them a bad example of how to live. Give them some good spiritual actions by which they can follow inside of life. I said statement number one, every action is a memory made. Statement number two, you only have a short time to make memories. The scripture says life is even a vapor. Peareth for a little time. And it vanishes the way. Seems like just yesterday, Brother Akins, you and your wife were young whippersnappers. She's still young, you're old. Life is quick. Seems like just yesterday, I just met my wife, and now I've got a grown child seems like just yesterday I met you over in the Philippines boy I wish I wouldn't have had that trip yeah. not because of my wife I mean I love my wife it's just them I love my mother-in-law it's my father-in-law you know I don't have mother-in-law jokes I have father-in-law jokes but anyway be, anyway, I got, be good just yesterday now 
20 something years later, it's just here and gone and memories are, life is short. Listen to me, some of you taking your life for granted, taking family for granted. You better, hey, you only have one family. Don't take it for granted. Some of you don't get along with brothers and sisters. Get right with God and find a way to get along with them. Well, they're just hard to get along with. Maybe it's you. You see, you only have a short time to make memories. Because once they're gone, listen to me, it's too late. Memories are made. It's done. It's over. You can't redo it. You can't redo life and say, let me press the reset button. It's here. It's gone. I'm saying, hey, you have a short time. So while you have that time, make the memories while you can. said statement number one I said every action is a memory made statement number two you only have a short time to make memories statement number three make memories a spiritual success rather than memories a spiritual failure I want you to listen to this statement right here you will often be remembered for your last act did you hear me you will often be remembered for your last act. How many preachers gave years to serve the Lord, fell in sin? What do we remember them for? The sin. He said, it's not fair. It's the way life is. Mom and dad, You better leave some memories of spiritual success. You say, what do you mean? Let me tell you one of the memories you can make. Go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Let me tell you one of the memories you can make. Take your children soul winning with you. Listen to me. There's nothing, there's nothing that thrills me to hear a mama who told me this morning, I, I, I took my daughter with me yesterday. She was a little nervous, but then I started letting her ring the doorbell, and I started letting her give out the track yesterday. That's a memory being made. And it's good for that child. Listen, I would much rather that child be able to get a little hot going out so winning than, to, than mom to drag that child into the bar and see the, the, the sin that goes on inside the world. Hey, make memories of spiritual success. Amen. Man, I, I, listen. That's why I, there's a drive inside of me right now, a passion. I want this church to grow. You know why? Because I want these kids to see a memory of spiritual success. Amen. I want these kids to grow up and say, boy, boy, God bless Maranatha Baptist Church. Man, we, we packed it out. Revival was happening. You become flipping about coming to church. Listen to me. You're, you're making memories. You're making memories. But it's not going to be the memories you want to leave behind. Statement number four, don't miss the opportunity to make memories. Don't miss the opportunity to make memories. Can I help you out? Digital technology is sure taking away a lot of good memories. Not against it. Those who know me know I'm a, I like technology. Love it. You say, wow, I like air conditioning. Somebody say amen on that one right there. I am not one of those that wants to go back to the old days and ride in a cover wagon. I think I was riding with Katie. Um, we were taking the, was it the Indian Turnpike we were taking? I, I can't remember. We were taking the Indian Turnpike. And I said, aren't you glad that we're not riding in a covered wagon up to Oklahoma City every weekend? Praise the Lord. I like, I like, listen to me. Listen, if we're not careful, we allow, we, we, we're, we're losing the memories that could be made by talking to each other, by spending time with each other. Listen, sometimes you just got to lay everything else down and make some good memories with each other. Listen, okay, so you have 
So you have some disagreements. Can I help you out? Stop talking about what you disagree with and talk about what you agree with. Listen, Brother Sandy's an OU fan. No, don't say amen on that. Roll tide. Now listen to me. Now, if that, was, if that was something that was a sharp disagreement, we, we joke about it right now, but I mean, until the season comes. But anyway. <laughs> or is it OSU? I'm not sure which one it is. But anyway. But why bring up something that I, listen, this idea of, well, I've got to, no, you don't have to enjoy your family. I've got family members that don't agree with everything that I agree with, but I tell you what I've done. I want to get along with them when I'm around them so I know what topics to kind of, once it starts up, I try to change the subject. Why? Because I want to have some good memories instead of every time we come together fighting and squabbling over our disagreements. Stop it! Which leads me to the next statement. Honor people now while they're alive. Let me tell you something that, I, that really bothers me. It bothered me here. And it bothered me at Brother Buchanan's funeral. This place was packed out for Brother O'Daniel's funeral. I still have the picture on my computer. Packed out. Where are they today? Went to Brother Buchanan's funeral. People who hadn't been in church for a long time come to the funeral. Yeah. Let me help you out. That don't help them. Right. Why are we waiting till somebody lays in a casket to, oh, I need to, you know, let, let, me, let me let them know. How, listen to me. While they're still breathing, let's honor people. Yes, we honor them when they've passed away, and certainly they've made an influence. But I'm saying that, that we, listen, we, we, we're, we're, we're crazy. We wait till they're in a pine box to start honoring them. They're, listen, they're, they're walking on streets of gold. They're not even listening to us right now. I don't know if we're trying to appease our conscience. But let's do the honoring while they're alive. Children, have you even told your daddy you love him today? Well, I don't get along with my dad. Have you told your dad you love him today? Well, let's move on from that one. Statement number six. Do what they've taught you Okay, do what those who have gone before you taught you. Do what those who have gone before you taught you. You know, you know the, the great thing about memories is this. I, I, think of my, I think of my mama's in heaven. My pastor is in heaven. Brother Buchanan is in heaven. Brother Daniel's in heaven. You know the best way to honor them right now, their memory? Do what they've taught you. Do what they've taught you. You know what Brother Daniel taught us? He taught us to go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. He taught us to give our tithes, our offerings, our faith promise giving. He taught us to read the Bible every day. He taught us to pray, to, to pray every day. He taught us to be a soul winner. He taught us to live a separated life. He taught us to love people. He taught us to love the Lord. Now listen to me. The best memory you can give to him is go out there and do what he taught you to do and say, say yeah, he's a good man. No, live, do what he taught you. Leads me to the last statement. Don't leave a memory of eternal loss. Don't leave a memory of eternal loss. You know what's great about memories? Let me help you out. Greatest thing about my mama is this. I get to see her someday. So how do you know? She's in heaven. 
Now, now, trust me, when you start figuring out the time frame of heaven, I taught that in the Sunday school after pa Brother Daniel passed away. My mom is still in heaven. She's still in awe, even though she's been gone for 10 years. She's only, time-wise, heaven time-wise, she's only been there for 15 minutes. She's still, wow. She hasn't even thought about me yet. Thanks a lot, Mom. Listen to me. But what if mama left me that wonder? Boy, I don't know if I'm going to see mama again. You know, the best thing you can do as a parent, as, a, as an individual, even if you're a child, the best thing you can do for mom and dad because you don't know when you're going to die is to make sure that you're saved, you're on your way to heaven so that way they have a hope one day they can see you again someday in heaven. Heaven is a real place and we're going to go there someday if you're saved. Hey, make sure today you give them a hope of eternity that you can see them again. The best gift you can give. If I die, I'm going to heaven. Not because I'm a member of Maranatha Baptist Church. Not because I'm a preacher. Not because I'm a preacher's kid. Not because I've been baptized. I'm going to go to heaven because one day, June 21st, 1973, my birthday is coming up real soon. June 21st, 1973. Knelt down beside a couch in Conway, South Carolina. And I received Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. My daughter, one day, when she walks by a casket and sees Daddy laying inside the casket, she's going to be able to say, okay, I know one thing. I know I get to see Daddy again someday. Hey, would your children know that? Amen. Let me ask you a question. Have you even told them about the way to heaven? Let me ask you a question. Are you saved? If you died right now, would you go to heaven? Well, I hope so. That's not a good enough memory. You need to know. There's a God in heaven. His name is Jesus Christ. He died on the cross and paid for your sins, was buried and rose again so that you could go to heaven someday. Why don't you make this that day that you change your hope to know. So that no matter who you are, whoever passes away first, those who love you, have a gift of memory, of eternity. Not eternal loss, eternal gain. The hope, the hope. We have a hope to see Concha, right? Amen. We have a hope to see Concha someday. He's grown up in heaven. He's better than Sam. Grown up in heaven. Aren't you glad of the memory of heaven? Now, I don't know who you are this morning. I don't know what memories you're leaving. But let's leave a gift of memory. Not the curse of memory. Father, thank you for what we've heard this morning. Lord, I, I truly hope that one day, and I don't know when that day will come for Alan Domley, I truly hope that one day I will leave those who have known me the gift of memory and that it not be a curse. Lord, there's people here this morning, they've been playing around with sin. Sin's going to get them someday, and if they're not careful, they're going to leave a curse instead of a gift. And God, I pray that today they would come down to this altar and rededicate their life to you and say, I'm going to start leaving a gift instead of a curse. I pray that for there's some here this morning that just need to take the time to thank people, honor them while they still have them. There's some here this morning that are not saved. They need to get that settled today. Whatever the need is, Holy Spirit of God, help your people. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. No one's looking. I wonder who's in here this morning. You say, preacher, this morning, I, I needed that reminder this morning. 
God spoke to my heart about something I need to work on. Preacher, pray for me if you like that. Would you slip your hand way up high? Let me pray for you. I see hands all over, all over. Many hands are raised. God bless you. You can put your hands down. Who else is it? Say, Preacher, I didn't raise my hand with these. I should have. Preacher, as you close in prayer, there are some things I need to work on. I really do want to leave a gift. I want to leave that gift and not a curse. Pray for me. Is there anyone else? I see these hands. I see these hands. You can put them down. I ask another question. Who here today would say, Preacher, if I died right now, I'm 100% sure my next breath would be in heaven. I can point to a time when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I can remember that time. If you're like that, would you slip your hand up high to testify of that? I know I'm saved. I know I'm on my way to heaven. Wonderful, wonderful. We put your hands down. There's some hands that couldn't be raised. You're flirting with leaving people with the memory of eternal loss. One of there's someone here this morning who say, Preacher, if I died right now, I'm not sure my next breath would be in heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. Preacher, pray for me. I'm not sure that I'm saved, but I'd like to get that settled. Pray for me. If you like that, slip your hand up high. I see that hand right there. Someone else. I'm not sure if I died right now, my next breath would be in heaven. Pray for me. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Just slip your hand up high. I won't embarrass you. Just want to pray for you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? In just a moment, I'm going to pray. As soon as I'm done praying, we're going to stand to our feet. Heads be bowed. Eyes will be closed. Brother Sandy Harjo will be standing at the front. If you raised your hand this morning, you said, I'm not sure I'm saved. I want you to leave your seat, go to the nearest aisle, come down the front, meet him at the front. We'll have someone take the Bible, show you how you can know for sure beyond the shadow of a doubt you're on your way to heaven. Christian, I want to ask you to come to this altar. You have a hard time kneeling down. Would you come to the front, kneel down at the front, or sit down in the front row, whatever you have to do, say, God, help me to leave a gift and not a curse of memory. Father, you know the needs. God, would you bless the invitation time? Lord, as Brother Jeremy begins to sing in just a minute, would you please help your people to respond? May we choose to leave a gift of memory by living right. Bless this invitation as only you can, I pray. In Jesus' name, heads are bowed, eyes are closed.